Now, as measures are being taken to try and slow down the spread of COVID-19 right around the world, those who work with Canada's homeless are worried about shelters. They are worried that they may not actually be prepared for an outbreak. And for more, we are now joined by Dr. Andrew Bond. He is the medical director of Inner City Health Associates. That is a group of doctors that work in Toronto with the shelters and drop-in centres. He's also the co-chair of the Canadian Network for the Health and Housing of the Homeless. So, Dr. Bond, thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me, Michael. Now, you know, we, we've heard it said that the homeless are among the most susceptible if there is an actual outbreak of COVID-19. In what ways, and this may be obvious to you, but I think it's worthwhile sharing with people at home, in what ways are people who are homeless more vulnerable? Sure. So there's a, three major levels of susceptibility or vulnerability of people who are experiencing homelessness. The first is that we know that the people who are homeless, the over 235,000 Canadians every year, have higher rates, uh, dramatically higher rates of chronic respiratory conditions, heart conditions, cancer, and mental health and addictions. All of those put one at higher risk of vulnerability once one's exposed to, to COVID. Uh, the second is that by virtue of being uh, or having higher rates of financial poverty, people have less resources to marshal to try and actually uh, support themselves and protect themselves during uh, an event like this. And the third is that obviously by living in congregate environments like day shelters or overnight shelters, um, where the standards are very different from either long-term care homes or even retirement homes uh, in terms of health protection ability, that people are at much higher risk of uh, not only obtaining uh, vi viral infections, but also sustaining and propagating infections as well. So you obviously know this. Uh, obviously, there are others within the shelter system who are aware of this as well, as well as public health. So what is being done right now to, to prepare for a possible outbreak of COVID-19 in shelters and among the homeless population? Sure. Yeah, so we, along with all of our partners at the uh, municipal level and health system level and public health level, I've been working for the last weeks to prepare. Um, it's important to note that this is happening right across the whole country. And the challenge that we face is that we know what needs to happen. As long as people are living in shelters across the country, we're unable to deliver on all of the, the great public health guidance that we're getting in terms of uh, social distancing, for example, cohorting, um, and ensuring isolation of those who are being un under investigation for COVID. We're working very hard to find ways that are novel and, um, and and try to be innovative about how to do that in this setting, but people are not meant to be living in shelters. Uh, as long as we have people in shelters across the, the country, they're going to be increasingly susceptible to this happening now and in the future. Um, what, we're happy, what we're doing right now is trying to mobilize enough personal protective equipment as soon as possible into the shelters. As, lo as long as there is not personal protective equipment to keep both workers safe, healthcare workers and shelter workers, we're unable to keep the, the clients who are there safe as well. And then we're in a, into an environment that is very difficult to operate and it's unclear how the shelter system will remain sustainable. The second is that um, we know that those who are under investigation need to be isolated. The challenge is that the isolation precautions that are directed to us by public health departments across the country are generally not able to be uh, employed in most shelters. The idea of having a private room, private bathroom, all the personal protective equipment and standards and protocols to enact isolation that people might do otherwise in their homes is not possible in most homeless shelters. And so we're working in to develop innovative models that would allow us to have some form of safe isolation uh, in the shelter system using uh, specific isolation shelters, hotel let rooms. Let me jump in, Dr. Bach. Yeah, sorry, let me jump in there because I'm, I'm wondering about specifics though because it's not like as much as there is a great desire to create housing, social housing for those that don't have homes otherwise, that's not going to be done quickly. So what are the that's immediate correct. solutions being raised? Yeah, so so the, the three major uh, areas of practice right now are ensuring that we've got the personal protective equipment to keep people safe to operate throughout this environment. The second would be to make sure that we've got these alternative isolation facilities to keep people isolated and what's being called cohorted, which is uh, ensuring that those people who are uh, not unwell are... So, so, sorry, sorry. so for example, in a hospital? No, 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 this would be in the shelter system itself. So you so would find an isolation system. space within the shelter system alone? That's correct. So we're, we're working right now with our partners to have a few different options. And that includes, and this is around the country, that people are working to have hotel options with isolation 
um, having modular units like they're operating out of Washington uh, or having specific shelters that are designated for isolation with private rooms. So we're mobilizing all these different options right now. Uh, but we need to make sure that we also have the personal protective equipment to be able to deliver on, on these models. Uh, we know how to do this, but we need to be resourced properly to do it. Um, we will need to have extra space as well. So the social distancing that works so well for everybody else who's not homeless does not work very well when you're in the homeless shelter. And so we need to make sure that we actually enact the, that social distancing practice. And that might mean and will mean having to expand and having more space in the shelter system using makeshift unused current spaces and turning them into shelters so that we can actually act upon that guidance from public health. Certainly a different aspect to this uh, fight that perhaps people are not aware of. So Dr. Bond, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. That's Dr. Andrew Bond, Medical Director of the Inner City Health Associates.